Let us pray. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3.18 Dear God, thank you for your love and mercies. Thank you for watching over me and providing protection in your arms. Please help me to seek you in times of trouble. Please remind me of your unconditional love during times of doubt. I know that I cannot do things on my own, so stand by my side as I face the challenges of today. Free my thoughts of negativity, guilt, and shame, and allow my faith to grow with each new day. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's daily prayer. For more inspiration and an incredible message from our feature pastor, Stay tuned to Pray.com's Sunday service. Homeowners, are you dreaming of financial freedom? Welcome to EasyKnock. Convert the value of your home without the hassle of strict lender qualifications. No credit score or debt-to-income requirements. Just the money you need when you need it. Sell your house to EasyKnock for 100% fair market value and then rent it back. No moving boxes, no goodbyes to neighbors, just the home you love with the financial freedom you've always dreamed of. Join thousands of easy, not satisfied customers nationwide who've converted their equity into opportunity. Visit easyknock.com today and step into a brighter, financially secure tomorrow. Terms and conditions apply. Easy Knock sale of leaseback products are not available in Massachusetts and select states and markets. Purchase price includes a mix of cash and an option. Sound is personal, intimate, and emotive. Just like this podcast. We are audiostack.ai. We combine AI writing. The best synthetic voices like ours. With production like music and mastering. And deliver them to be heard, be it ads, podcasts, or VOs for video. Just like this ad you're listening to right now. However, we have millions of spots just like this on podcasts. And rather than hearing from us, we want to hear from you. How would you like to win an AI audio campaign for free? Do you work with businesses, products, events, or causes that could benefit from free promotion on podcasts in the coming month? Tell us how you might use synthetic voices. Or dynamically change ads for a spirituality podcast like this versus news, science, or even sports. Go to audiostack.ai forward slash contest and your company could be heard by millions. See webpage for T's and C's. What are you looking for in a new smart TV? 4K picture quality, high quality and immersive sound, a sleek design. All of those are givens, but only the new Roku Pro series has all of those and the Roku streaming experience, an award-winning OS. Get fast, easy access to all your apps like iHeart, where you can stream all your favorite music, radio, and podcasts all day, and regular all-inclusive trips to Roku City. The new Roku Pro series, a smart TV built by the streaming pros. Hi, I'm Cindy Crawford, and I'm the founder of Meaningful Beauty. Well, I don't know about you, but like I never liked being told, oh, wow, you look so good for your age. Like, why even bother saying that? Why don't you just say you look great at any age, every age? That's what Meaningful Beauty is all about. We create products that make you feel confident in your skin at the age you are now. Meaningful Beauty. Beautiful skin at every age. Learn more at MeaningfulBeauty.com. Boston Proper is for women who love distinctive style in styles that don't define them. Boston Proper designs are unique and made to fit flawlessly. You know the fashion changes, but style is forever, and yours is your very own. Boston Proper creates original pieces and curates entire collections for any season. Confident women wear Boston Proper as an expression of who they are, with chic, polished styling and unforgettable looks that get noticed anytime, every day, and on any occasion. From classic and iconic to on trend and of the moment, Boston Proper creates one-of-a-kind pieces to bring exclusive looks and elevated outfits to you only the way Boston Proper can. 
Boston Proper is your source for those must-have items made to fit flawlessly. When you want that certain something in everything you wear, wear Boston Proper. Sign up for VIP access and enjoy 20% off. Shop at bostonproper.com and wear it like no one else. There was a man who was flying a hot air balloon, and as he was flying... He got lost. He didn't know where he was. And he spotted a man on the ground. So he lowered the balloon toward the ground. And from the balloon, he shouted out to the man on the ground. And he said, hey, can you help me? I promised to meet a friend here in a half an hour or a half an hour ago. I promised to meet a friend about a half an hour ago, but I don't know where I am. Can you tell me where I am? And so the man on the ground said, you are in a hot air balloon. You're about 30 feet off the ground. You're between 40 and 42 degrees north latitude and between 58 and 60 degrees west longitude. And the man in the hot air balloon yelled back down and he said, you must be an engineer. And the man on the ground said, why, I am an engineer. How did you know? And the man in the balloon said, because everything you just told me is technically correct, but I have no idea what it means, and I'm still lost. And the man below said, you must be a politician. And the man in the balloon said, well, I am a politician. How did you know that? And the man on the ground said, you don't know where you are or where you're going. You made promises you can't keep. You're in the same position you were before we met, but you're making it sound like it's my fault. Here's the moral of the story. When you're lost, ask the right person for directions. Too many people are lost, but they don't know which way to go. They're sort of drifting through life, floating through life. And they talk to different people to get different opinions. But I want to talk to you tonight about the right answer. Because you know what? In life, all of us lose our way from time to time. A lot of us wonder, am I going in the right direction? Will I end up at the right destination? We feel like we're drifting. We sense that something is missing. And you can talk to some people who will tell you technically why you feel the way you feel. Maybe you lost somebody to death and they say, well, you're grieving. And that's why you feel this way. Or perhaps you lost your job. And so they say, well, your expectations were a little too high. That's fine to have the technical answer. But what about change? What about going in the right direction? What about getting the right kind of answer so you know where you're going in this life and in the life to come. You know, when you're young, and some of you still are very young, but when you're young, everybody has hopes and dreams about what their life is going to be like. When they grow up, they're going to be a doctor or they're going to be a nurse or they're going to uh, be a work in the fashion industry or whatever they're going to do. They have hopes and dreams of who they're going to be when they grow up. But then they grow up. And sometimes you look at your life and you go, well, this is not what I planned. This is not the person I wanted to be. And you wish you could have a do-over. You wish you could do everything over again. You want to change. Most people do. But you know, many people want their life to change, but in all the wrong ways. There was a poll that was conducted, several polls that I've read actually, where people were asked, if you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? Almost everybody said they would make outward changes. They would change the way they look. They would change their hair. They would change, or they would get more hair, or they would uh, have a different body type, or whatever it might be. It was all outward. And some people go to extremes to get that done. There was a show on television a few years ago called Extreme Makeover, where people went through all these crazy surgeries and facelifts and, and, and 
Then they followed these people. And some people tried to revert back to the lifestyle they lived when they were in their 20s. Many people divorced. One woman was severely depressed because all they were doing is changing the outside, but the inside was still the same. I want to talk to you briefly about what it is to start over again. Because here we are celebrating freedom. We live in a great country, don't we? The United States of America, the land of the free, the home of the brave. And we should celebrate our freedom. But you know what? While we're celebrating our freedom, many of you are still shackled inside. You're still a slave to something or to someone. And Jesus asked a very important question. He said, what will it profit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Well, there was a man in the Bible. His name was Nicodemus. His story is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. He was a man who knew that something was missing from his life. Oh, he had everything outwardly, but inwardly something was missing. And so here's a few verses from the Bible that tell you his story. It says, After dark one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, the truth is, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. What do you mean, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? Now, in just these verses, we learn a few things about this man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus one night. First of all, we notice he was famous. He was respected. Jesus called him a respected teacher. He was a leader. He was very well known. He was well educated. He was popular. People would go to Nicodemus when they had questions. But inside Nicodemus, he had his own questions. And that's why he came to Jesus. Something else. Nicodemus, we are told from history, was a very wealthy man. The Jewish Talmud said Nicodemus was one of the four richest men living in Jerusalem at that time. So think of what he had. He had fame. He had education. He had status. He had money. You would think that is enough to fill the void, the empty spot inside anybody's life but not Nicodemus. He was not down and out. He was up and out. Some of you feel down and out. You've lost things in your life. You've lost friends. You've lost family members. You've lost employment. You've lost your bank account. Maybe you even lost your own home. You say, I'm down and out. But you can also have everything and be up and out. Because whether you're down and out or up and out, you're still out. And Nicodemus had it all. But something wasn't right. You know, a few years ago, I had a businessman come into my office here in Albuquerque. He was a very well-known restaurant owner uh, in this town. He came into my office. I closed the door. And he looked at me straight in the eye. And he said, I have millions and millions of dollars. But he said, I'm disappointed with life. 
It's not enough. It doesn't fill me. Hip-hop artist Jay-Z said there's lots of people with tons of money who aren't happy. Alexander the Great, you know about him from your history books. Alexander the Great had it all. He conquered the whole world. At 31 years of age, Alexander the Great conquered the world, and he sat down and he wept because it wasn't enough for him. The actor Nicolas Cage said, I think there's a hole in the soul of my generation. Think of those words, a hole in the soul of my generation. Do you have a hole in your soul? Do you just sense that something isn't enough, something is not right? The truth is, everyone has a hole in their soul. God made you that way. God put that hole inside of you. The Bible says in the book of Romans, God has made every person subjected to futility. That is emptiness. God made you with a hole in your soul, and only he can fill it. Only he can fill it. You can try to stuff things and people and experiences and status and fame inside, and nothing will satisfy you. And here's the thing. Whenever you try to stuff your life with pleasure and money and drugs and sex, you name it, the hole just gets bigger and bigger. What I want you to know is tonight, the hole in your soul can be filled. And you can leave this place a free man, a free woman, a free human being, truly free. Jesus said, whoever the Son sets free, he is free indeed. Something else about Nicodemus. He was a religious man, very devout in his faith. The Bible says he was a Pharisee. Now, a Pharisee is a very special group of people. They live by keeping rules. Two days a week they fasted. I know that intermittent fasting is a big deal these days. But Nicodemus did intermittent fasting, not for health purposes, but for spiritual purposes. He was a very devout, religious person. And many people that I meet have a spiritual side. They've had a spiritual upbringing. Many of you had a spiritual upbringing. You were raised in a church or a synagogue or by some religious group. You grew up with a religious and devout faith. I grew up in a very religious home. I went to church every week. I was baptized. I was confirmed. I went through the ceremonies. But there was still a hole inside my soul. According to Pew Research, Americans are becoming less religious, that is, they're checking out of church, they're checking out of formal religion, but they're becoming more spiritual at the same time. Now think about that. They're becoming less religious, but they're becoming more spiritual. That is, they would say, I still recognize that I want meaning and purpose in my life. Therefore, the material world isn't enough, so I want to become a more spiritual person. Many years ago when I was in high school, that was many years ago, I had a friend and we did all sorts of crazy spiritual experiments from astral projection, soul travel, the migration of the soul, to automatic writing and auto-hypnosis. And every time I experimented with all of those things, I got emptier and emptier. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That can happen to you tonight. At Balloon Fiesta Park, you can be set free. You can have the hole in your soul filled. You can come and be satisfied and drink from the river of life. So what did Nicodemus do? The Bible says he came to Jesus at night. Why? Why did he come? Because the man who had all the answers had some questions. 
And you might have questions. You might have questions about faith, questions about life you've never been able to answer. I'm encouraging you to do something with those questions. It's okay to have them. You might have doubts. It's okay to have them. You might have questions. It's okay to have questions. Just take those questions to the right source, to the right place, to the right person when you ask those questions. Not like the man in the balloon asking the dude on the ground, help me out, but come to the God who made you. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Why did he come at night? Now, some people make a big deal out of this. Some say, well, Nicodemus was scared to be seen with Jesus in broad daylight. Maybe so. Or it could be he was just busy during the day. He was, after all, a religious leader. He did have responsibilities. He did have a day job he had to take care of. And in the evening, he was free. And he probably came out of curiosity. He had heard many things about Jesus. And he just wanted to hear for himself what this Jesus had to say. And like Nicodemus, maybe you've come and you have questions. A a simple question. What fanatics would rent a balloon fiesta field and have a large-scale evangelistic event? Well, let me answer that. People who care about your soul. People who want to see you go to heaven and not go to hell. People who want to give you an opportunity to say yes to life change. That's who. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and and Jesus goes right to the heart. As soon as Nicodemus asks a question, Jesus says, Hey, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you won't get to heaven. Now, that's an unusual statement. What did he mean when he said born again? Is that some sort of denomination? Oh, you're one of those born-again Christians. You know, you have Catholics and you have Protestants, but then you have the born-again Christians over in that corner. No, it means to be born from above, a spiritual birth, not a physical birth, a spiritual birth. Lady Gaga wrote a song called Born This Way where she said, I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. That's the problem. You were born this way. That's the problem. You need to be reborn. You need to be born again. That's the answer. You were born physically, but you're dead spiritually unless you've been born again. The Bible says you are dead in your trespasses and your sins. So the question is, have you been born again? I know you've been born. Here you are, alive on planet Earth. But have you been born spiritually from above? Because if you haven't been born again, you're just part of the walking dead. You're dead while you live. I remember when I came to Jesus Christ many years ago, I said yes to him in July, one summer evening in Northern California, a night like this. I'd never heard the term born again, ever. And it wasn't popularized yet. But I was looking for a way to describe what it was like to be experiencing such a fresh outlook in life and such a peaceful outlook in life and somebody came up to me and said skip have you been born again and i thought that's perfect that's the best description i've ever heard it's like you get born all over again a fresh start so here's the question how do you do it how do you do it that's what nicodemus asked how can a person be born when he's old let me Ask that question a different way. Can a person really change? Is it possible that your life could change once and for all? How many times have you asked yourself that? Could I really change? Will I really change? You ask yourself that question every New Year's Eve. Will this year be any different than last year? And many people try really hard to make a change. But here's the problem. They're working on the outside. Jesus works on the inside. 
He changes you from the inside out, not the outside in. I'm not going to promise you that he'll give you a facelift or a tummy tuck or that you'll lose 20 pounds if you follow Jesus. But I'm saying this, you won't go to hell. You will go to heaven. You'll be forgiven of your past. You'll have the hole in your soul filled up once and for all. And so Nicodemus says, how can that be possible? How can a man be born when he is old? And Jesus answers that question in language that is so easy for anyone to understand. This is what he said. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's the promise. The most famous verse in all the Bible. Whoever believes in him. Who is this gift offered to? Whoever. Whoever will take it. You see, God will take you. God will take anyone who comes to him. You could be rich. You could be poor. You could be smart. You could be uneducated. He'll take you. He'll make you different. You just have to admit that you have a need and ask God for his help. Now, notice that Jesus didn't say, you should be born again. You ought to be born again. I think it'd be really nice if you would be born again. He said, you must be born again. You have to be born again. You will not get to heaven unless you are born from above, spiritual birth, by asking Jesus, who, whom God sent to take your sin on the cross, so that you could have life, unless you believe in him, you will perish. If you believe in him, you will never perish. So let's get practical as we close this out. What do you really have to do? Well, first of all, you have to admit that you have a need. You have to own the fact that you are needy before God. The Bible says you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We have to own that. We have to admit that. No more lame excuses. Well, it's not my fault. I was born this way, or it's because my parents did this or that. No, you are the way you are because you and I were born with that need. We are sinners, so admit it. Second, you have to realize that Jesus died for you. And when he died, he took your sin upon himself. He paid for your sin with his own blood. And God says, that's good enough. So admit that you're a sinner. Realize Jesus died for you. Then the other thing, the third thing you have to do is you have to repent. That means turn around. Repent. It means change direction. It means you're walking one way and you do a U-turn and you walk the other direction. You've been going a certain direction. You've been drifting in your life. Tonight is your opportunity to say yes to him, admit that you need him, realize Jesus died for you, and turn around, make a decision. And that decision is to believe. The Bible says whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now you say, well, I believe. I've always believed in God. I've gone to church my whole life. I was raised in a religious home like Nicodemus. I've always believed in God. Listen, listen. Believe means to place your weight on. To place your weight on. I'm standing on a platform tonight. And I'm placing all my weight on this platform. Because I have faith that whoever put up this platform did a good job. Did they? Did they do a good job? Am I okay? Yeah, I think I'm okay. So when you believe in Jesus, you place your whole life on him. This is Independence Day. People are celebrating their independence. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you acknowledge your dependence on him. Not your independence from him, but your dependence upon him. And that is what gives you your freedom. So you need to admit that you're a sinner, realize Jesus died for you, make a turn, make a decision by believing in him. And then next, 
I think you need to do it publicly. You need to do it publicly. In a few minutes, I'm going to give you an opportunity, no matter where you are in this several thousand populated field, to get up and come. It's a very definite act you have to do. You have to place one foot in front of the other and actually walk up to the front. And when you come up here, I'm going to lead you in a prayer so that you can know with assurance that you're saved. You say, Skip, why do I have to do it publicly? Why can't I just say a prayer in my heart and go home? Well, Jesus said this. He said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father and all the holy angels. There's something that happens in a person's life when they decide to believe in Jesus and make a public declaration. Everybody else in the world's coming out of the closet. Everybody's celebrating their pride for this or that. Make a stand for Jesus Christ. Stand for what's right and righteous and good and godly. And then finally, you need to do it right now. Right now. You don't wait. You do it right now. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. So as we sing this song, I'm going to ask you now to get up from where you are seated or wherever you're standing. Find an area to get through. We're going to open this gate and you can come on the side. You make your way up to the front and stand right in front of this podium. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And he's going to fill the hole in your soul. But you come and you come right now. Do it publicly and come. We're going to open this gate. Let's open this gate that's right here, right up here in the front. Come on. Some of you are way in the back. Keep coming forward. God sees you. He knows you're out there. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to make you his own. He wants to give you his freedom. Say yes to him. Come. As we sing this song, you come. give time for those who are still walking or considering to make their way forward. You're going to have to come to the side. I was told that they would open this gate and for some reason it's still locked. But um, So you have to come around. Come around to the side. Let's squeeze in. Do you mind? Squeeze in a little bit. There's lots of people coming forward. Let's go this way. Come, come right up to the front. Come on. Come on up. Come close. this moment pass you up. Some of you have been drifting for way too long. You've let your balloon just sort of float along the landscape. You've asked people for directions. They've given you their advice. 
Maybe a doctor said, I'll diagnose you, or a psychiatrist or psychologist said, you have this disorder or ailment. No matter what your background is, no matter who you are or what you've done, you need to come to the right person, the right place, and that person is Jesus. Give Jesus a chance. Come to him. Some of you have tried everything else. But you need to come to the right source, the living water. You want to do over? You want to be forgiven? You want to know that when you die, you'll go to heaven? You make a decision to say yes to Christ. Do it right now. sardines up here, aren't we? It's the way we want it. We love it. Let's squeeze in here and make room for just a few more. In a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's going to be a do-over. You're going to push the reset button. More than that, God's going to press the reset button. More than that, God is going to make you His child, His son, His daughter. He's going to give you a relationship with Him. This is where it all begins. By coming, by coming just now, you are saying, I'm a sinner. I need help. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to go His way. So you've come forward now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Let's quiet things down a little bit. 
I'm going to lead all of you in a prayer. I'm going to say the prayer out loud. I want you to say this prayer out loud after me. Got it? I want you to mean it from your heart. Say this. Say, Lord, I give you my life. I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. That he shed his blood. That he rose again from the dead. I turn from my sin. I turn to Jesus as my Savior. I want to be free. Receive me as your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give it up for the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on. That's what freedom sounds like. That prayer you just heard, that's what freedom sounds like. Listen, listen, listen. Those of you who walked forward and just prayed that prayer, you are a child of God. The old things are done. The old you is gone. Welcome to the new you. You say, well, I don't feel any different. You are different. You're a son. You're a daughter of the living God in heaven. And because you place your faith in him, you've turned to him, your life's going to change. And the best news is you're going to be with him forever in heaven, period. We hope you enjoyed this special service from Calvary Church. We'd love to know how this message impacted you. Email us at mystory@calvarynm.church. At and just a reminder, you can support this ministry with a financial gift at calvarynm.church/give. Thank you for joining us for this teaching from Calvary Church. The podcast, The Bible in a Year with Jack Graham, is a moving and inspiring biblical audio experience that will help you master wisdom from the world's greatest book. In each episode, you'll learn to apply biblical principles to everyday life. Each cinematic episode is a journey through the Bible's most profound stories that will strengthen your appreciation of the Word and inspire you to keep learning. Listen to The Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Sound is personal, intimate, and emotive. Just like this podcast. We are audiostack.ai. We combine AI writing. The best synthetic voices like ours. With production like music and mastering. And deliver them to be heard, be it ads, podcasts, or VOs for video. Just like this ad you're listening to right now. However, we have millions of spots just like this on podcasts. And rather than hearing from us, we want to hear from you. How would you like to win an AI audio campaign for free? Do you work with businesses, products, events, or causes that could benefit from free promotion on podcasts in the coming month? Tell us how you might use synthetic voices. Or dynamically change ads for a spirituality podcast like this versus news, science, or even sports. Go to audiostack.ai forward slash contest and your company could be heard by millions. See webpage for T's and C's. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have supervision, enhanced hearing, extraordinary reflexes, to be, dare we say, superhuman? Well, Roku's new Pro Series TV can't do any of that for you. But with a 4K screen, side-firing speakers, and a blazing fast refresh rate, it'll sure feel like it. Elevate your entertainment using all your favorite apps like iHeart and play all your music, radio, and podcasts with the new Roku Pro Series. Your senses aren't better. Your TV is. Life hack number seven. Get an iPhone 12 on Straight Talk. Life hack. Here's how it works. You walk into Walmart, go to the electronics section, ask for iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system, and select a new Silver Unlimited plan. They'll smile because it's a good plan. You get real unlimited data all for just $20 a month for the whole first year. Get it at Walmart or straighttalk.com. Straight Talk. Less dollars, more cents. Taxes and fees apply. Requires activation of iPhone 12 and a new Silver Unlimited plan or higher-end auto pay enrollment. $25 a month service credit applied for up to 12 months if eligibility requirements are met. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com.
Camry.com. You know that vibe? When you're riding in your all-new Camry and that cousin calls. The one who always tries to one-up you. I mean, yours is fine and all, but... Not even a hello. It's straight into better job, boyfriend, vacation spot, your response? Brushing the dirt off your shoulders. And pulling up in the all-new Camry. 225 horsepower, bold grille, available 19-inch wheels, and wireless charger. <laughs> who has the better what now? Thought so? The vibe just shifted in your favor with the all-new Camry. Toyota, let's go places. You never want to find yourself out on the water fishing without the essentials. So it's best to always pack a Columbia PFG Solar Stream Elite hoodie to protect against the sun. I mean, it provides great protection, and it's really breathable so you don't get hot. That's a win-win. Columbia PFG has a lot of great gear. So before you head out on the water, head over to Columbia.com slash PFG to shop their performance fishing gear. 